following message is a presentation of Valley Metro Church, a community of believers dedicated to knowing God and making Him known. This morning I'm excited to talk to you about a topic, hopefully one that will change your life. Uh, it's a topic about a treasure. And if I were to tell you about an amazing treasure and I would, could tell you where you could actually find it, how many of you would run right out and, and seek it out? Only some of you? Why? Because it's too hot? <laughs> uh, hopefully all of you. <clears throat> God has this profound treasure. I don't want to tell you that I have it all down when it comes to this treasure. It's the treasure of wisdom. But I have discovered it. And I have picked up pieces of it, like gold nuggets. It's profound. It is powerful. It is life-changing. It is revolutionary. And it is the, the power of, of God's wisdom in your life. And when you think about wisdom, um, I want to talk this morning about what it is and what it's not, because there's a lot of people who have a different view of what is wise. Have you ever seen uh, America's Funniest Videos? You ever see people doing things they think are wise? Not too wise? <laughs> so the pendulum swings when it comes to what is wise and what is not wise. Today we're talking about God's wisdom. Some people confuse what wisdom is. They make the mistake of thinking that wisdom is knowledge. Wisdom is not knowledge. Knowledge is good. Knowledge is acquiring facts and some experience, but wisdom is how we apply that. Wisdom is how we put knowledge to work. So knowledge is good, but wisdom is far superior than that. The irony right now is that we have more knowledge in our world than at any time in human history. Uh, some statistics is that there's more information produced in the last 30 years than in the previous 5,000. That's how quick knowledge is building in our day and age. Uh, today, information double, doubles every four years, which is incredibly fast when it comes to knowledge. And we have more knowledge at our fingertips than we can possibly imagine right through the internet. You can discover, find out anything. But knowledge doesn't always translate to wisdom. And that's why we're talking about wisdom from God's perspective, the ability to use knowledge in the right way. Now, you don't have to be that educated to have wisdom. Um, sometimes children apply some wisdom. Here's some submissions from, from children regarding wisdom, their experience in life with wisdom, uh, young and educated. Patrick, age 10, says, never trust a dog to watch your food. That's pretty wise. Joel, 10 years old, says, don't pick on your sister when she's holding a baseball bat. <laughs> Sounds like experience. Uh, Eileen, eight years old, says, never try to baptize a cat. Once again, <laughs> sounds like experience. <laughs> Michael, 14, says, when your dad is mad at you and asks, do I look stupid? Don't answer him. <laughs> and if your mother asks, how's my diet working out? The answer is always great. Always great. So a <laughs> little bit of wisdom. It didn't take a lot of knowledge, but maybe some experience. Things we pick up along the way. We learn wisdom uh, along the way. The thing about wisdom, there's a lot of so-called wisdom in this day and age. There's a lot of alleged wisdom. Um, I would suggest that you and I have to test everything. We have to test what we hear to be wisdom uh, according to God's word. Uh, by definition, the Bible says that God gives us everything we need uh, according to life and godliness. He gives us profound insight, profound clarity. And so through life, there's these, these little aspects of what seems like wisdom, but you and I have to test them to see if it truly is wisdom. There's all sorts of things out there. So there's worldly wisdom and there's godly wisdom, and they're two different things. You may go to the doctor, he may give you some wisdom, or you go, may go to a, a, a car mechanic, he may give you some wisdom, but whether you should execute that wisdom or follow through is where you got to get together with God and know from the living God whether this is wise for you or not. You got to navigate this stuff. The Bible says a couple of profound things about this, and some of these are in your bulletin. And I, my prayer today is that everyone in this room gets in on deeper dimensions of the wisdom of God. It truly is a treasure. It is an absolute treasure. It can change your life forever if you and I choose to go on a quest for this wisdom. And uh, a couple of things to set it up. Proverbs 2.30 says this. It says, there is no wisdom, no insight, no plan 
that can succeed against the Lord. In other words, God's plan is the ultimate plan. His wisdom is the ultimate wisdom. There is no wisdom greater than his. This is where wisdom really starts, to understand that God's wisdom is the ultimate wisdom. Uh, Isaiah 55 says that his ways are so far above ours as the heavens are above the earth. In other words, his wisdom is profound. Ours is limited. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1.20 says this, Where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? In other words, when we come out with something we think was really wise, God's not going, wow, that is brilliant. You are so smart. I'm blown away with you. He's not doing that. God's wisdom is so far above that. In other words, God in his wisdom understands what will be revealed over time. He knows that. He's not surprised. So when you hear so-called wisdom, you need to test it all the time. There's going to be things that come up, books you read, things in the paper, things on the news that's going to be presented as wisdom. And our job as a believer is to test everything. The Bible says test the spirits to understand is this from God or is it not from not God. It's very valid. Here's a few statements. I'm going to read them. And you test in your own heart whether these seem to line up with Scripture or not. Okay? Test whether these are wise. A successful marriage isn't finding the right person. It's being the right person. See, you're getting, yeah, this, uh, this is, test it, test it. Feed your faith and your doubts will starve to death. God wants spiritual fruit, not religious nuts. I agree with that. <laughs> if the grass is greener on the other side of the fence, you can bet the water bill is higher. Probably true. <laughs> it's all right to sit on your pity pot every now and then. Just be sure you flush when you're done, okay? Okay. Um, Marriages may be made in heaven, but they all have to be maintained on earth. I would agree with that. Sorrow looks back, worry looks around, but faith looks ahead. It's a good description of faith. The best way to get even is to forget. The tongue must be heavy indeed because so few people can hold it. Hmm. James says something very similar to that. To forgive is to set the prisoner free and then discover that the prisoner was, was you. Too many people offer God prayers with claw marks all over them. Isn't that true? Grapple with stuff before we give it to God. The mighty oak tree was once a little nut <laughs> that held its ground. I like that. And the last one is this. You'll notice that a turtle only makes progress when it sticks its neck out. That's faith, isn't it, and endurance. You know, there's all sorts of stuff to come up. You have to test it. People say, well, cleanliness is next to godliness, right? People like, they think that's in the Bible. That's not in the Bible. There's so many things that come up that sound like wisdom, and you got to test it, guys. we got to test wisdom because there's worldly wisdom and godly wisdom, and there's a big difference, and here's why. Each of those wisdoms has a different outcome. Worldly wisdom is aiming at an end. It's aiming at a destination. Godly wisdom is aiming at a different destination. And that's why you and I have to test so-called wisdom to find out if it's worldly wisdom or godly wisdom. There's a great little snapshot of this in the story of Alice's adventures in Wonderland. And there's a scene in the, in the, in the book, in the story, where Alice asks the... Uh, Cheshire cat. There's a fork in the road and she doesn't know which way to go. So she asks this cat for directions which way she should take. And the cat says, well, that depends a good deal on where you want to get to. And Alice responds, I don't much care where. So the cat says, then it doesn't matter which way you walk. And that's the same in our lives true as well. If we know where we want to get to, it does matter the way we walk and what wisdom we apply. If we don't care, then it doesn't matter. Uh, this is so important that God has a whole book actually in the Bible dedicated to this, the book of Proverbs. Um, the book of Proverbs written primarily by Solomon so that his children will know. First of all, uh, we, we realize with Solomon, when he came into power, when he came into office, when God graduated him, the first prayer he asked is, God, give me wisdom. The first thing I want. I'm not asking for riches, fame, fortune. I want wisdom so I can govern and, and, and oversee what you've given me. Very rewardable. 
We know from his life he didn't always follow that wisdom, but he had profound wisdom, so much that he documented it in the Proverbs so that he can hand it on to his children, so that it could live on in the Proverbs. And the first thing that it says in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1, and some of these, again, are in your bulletin, it says, the Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, listen to this, for gaining wisdom and instruction for understanding words of insight. So from the very beginning, he's setting up this book of Proverbs with the, with the preface that I've got so much wisdom right here, God-given wisdom that I'm putting out for all future generations if you choose to seek it. There is profound wisdom in the book of Proverbs. Not the only place, but profound wisdom. I would suggest that if you're seeking wisdom, that's a phenomenal place to begin. I don't know if you have a devotional life. You get up in the morning or through the day or week and really spend committed time, uh, absolute committed time to the word. But I would say if you're seeking wisdom, Proverbs is a profound place to begin. It's not you know, a matter of learning all kinds of knowledge, although that's beneficial. It's a matter of understanding the wisdom of God and applying it in our lives, profound stuff. Uh, Proverbs 3.13, I want to read some of these because they're very insightful, talking about how much of a treasure wisdom really is, that it's genuinely a full-on treasure. Uh, Proverbs 3.13 says, Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding, for she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand, and her left hand are riches and honor. Pretty profound about the value of wisdom. Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5 begins, Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget my words or turn away from them. Do not forsake wisdom, and she will protect you. Love her, and she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. Isn't that cool? The beginning of wisdom, get it. Desire it. I mean, the thing about this is some folks don't actually chase wisdom. They don't desire it. They just navigate life, and if it comes up, I'll deal with it, or I have to figure something. But he's saying, no, don't just navigate life. Chase it. Pursue it. It is a full-blown treasure. It's more valuable than gold, silvers, rubies. Hold on to it. Seek it out. Desire it. Don't just, yeah, well, if I got to make a decision, you know, I'll have to figure out what I... No, bigger than that. Pursue it now. Pursue wisdom. Proverbs 16. How much better to get wisdom than gold to choose understanding rather than silver? And Proverbs 24 verse 3 says, By wisdom a house is built, and through understanding it is established... Through knowledge, its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. He is saying that seeking wisdom is a full-on quest. It is a quest. It's for, it's for you and I to actually get to a point in life where we're not satisfied with a little bit of wisdom here or there, where we say, God, you are the author of ultimate wisdom. I want to go on a quest. I want to find this like a full-on treasure. I want to get in on these rubies, these gems, this gold and this silver of God's wisdom in our lives. And again, some folks, and we, we tend to all do this, most folks live by habit or by tradition or by what they've always done, routine. Get up every morning, go through their day, do their thing, turn on the TV, go to bed. They, most folks go through life with a standard routine. And I would suggest to you that if we always do what we've always done, we'll always get what we've always gotten. Do you agree with that? It's just the way life is. Well, you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. Solomon is saying, hold on, go on a quest. This has been a presentation of Valley Metro Church. To hear more messages or to support future podcasts, please visit valleymetrochurch.com.